Hey, how's it going YouTube? Today I have a new video for you guys. It is about one of my other crazy little hobby slash passions, which is coffee. So today I will be showing you my Brazza 270, how to take it apart, do some uh, preventative maintenance on it, clean the burrs to make sure not only that you're getting the best quality grind from the coffee that you put in here, but that you are treating this machine how it should so it could last as long as possible. Let's get right into it. So the main things that you're going to need are the little Allen key here and this little cleaning brush. These actually come inside your 270 bucks, so unless you get them secondhand or on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, you should have these and it should be good to go. First thing that you're going to want to do is take off the hopper and that's as easy as just spinning it and pulling up. Now this can look all kinds of different ways. I wouldn't put this in like the uh, dishwasher or anything crazy like that, but I would take the time to clean this out. I personally do not fill the beans with this uh, because when you grind uh, with the beans, not with like a water droplet or something in it, the static electricity causes the fine grind to like it all over the place. So I have resorted to weighing every dose out and ensuring that I spritz a little water every single time that I grind. That also causes the oils of the coffee to get stuck up in here a little bit more often. Um, so making sure that you take care of this is very important. I'll set that off to the side for now. Next, you have your little Porta filter arm right here. I'm gonna swing that to the side. I'm gonna open up the porta filter arms and got a nice little dusty coffee thing here, but this is gonna like really uh, spick and span and brand new once we're done. If you look here on the side, I'm actually going to take the power cable off now just so everything's all neat and tidy. So if you look right here, there's going to be a blue arrow and where you go to actually dial in where you'd like your grind to be, if you rotate it all the way around counterclockwise, you will see that there will be a blue and a blue that match up right there. So what you're going to do is line that up and then just slightly let it fall. Now as you can see, not only are there like huge little coffee chunks, but there is just coffee all over the place in there. Uh, so if you're getting like new beans or something like that, and they taste like a little off or have remnants of other coffee, and you do not clean your grinder, this could be one of the huge reasons why. It's also important to get your little brush uh, once we're cleaning to clean up in here and make sure everything is good to go. The Brazza 270, it's uh, pretty easy to clean. Everything just comes straight through. So you have the burrs and then you have the uh, what the burrs grind up against in there. So everything is pretty simple and I'll show you that right now. So now we get to the point where we need the Allen key. So this Allen key is going to go at the bottom of your burr. If we can get a little close up right there. So I am going to get my Allen key. I'm going to hold the black plastic piece right here as I try and get it out. So you can just kind of uh, roughly scrub it and like while it's attached like this but I like to make sure that I am getting in there and really doing this thing the service that it needs okay so as you can see that popped off my shim came off as well if you don't know what this is this should also come with your grinder as well if you put this in there, it's almost like a spacer that changes like what the grinding level will do. So if you're working with finer grinds for espresso, you pop one, maybe even two shims in there, and you're gonna be working with a much uh, finer spectrum uh, along your grinding levels. If you have any questions like that, please let me know or like what that means or how you can get this in here 
basically just take it apart to clean it and then once you get to this step if you don't have one in there and you add it every single step on your grinder is going to get a lot finer and it's pretty nice to really dial in your espresso okay now this part is like the only like not easy slash sketchy part where this black part you actually kind of have to manhandle out of there kind of like that so you just give it a nice little tug at an angle and it'll pop off and there you have it kind of taken down to an even finer level so if you want to see like how much coffee could get stuck in there this is about maybe two weeks of use without cleaning it so you really do want to take this apart and do it maybe once every week once every two weeks and especially when you get new beans just so you're not really masking the flavor of your beans with uh, older bean residue that's in there now that we have everything all discombobulated let's get to cleaning so I like to just use the little brush that came with it, but you could use a toothbrush or something of that nature. Um, but I find that this brush really just easily gets in there and it's like stiff enough to where it will actually take all of those bean oils out of the burr. All right, put that into a little clean pile. And then some stuff is as simple as giving there a little wipe down, like the chimney or whatever you'd like to call this thing. Just making sure that there's no crazy bean stuff anywhere. And of course this is user preference. You can make it as clean as you want. But as a weekly or bi-weekly measure, I think just getting it kind of nice and clean, like where all the beans are going to be coming from, that's good enough for me. Give it a little taparoo there. Now, I don't know if you guys remember how that looked earlier, but take a look at that in there now. So if you really wanted to get into those crevices there, you could get like a Q-tip or something like that. And I'm going to get this paper towel first and kind of just run it around in there. Make sure that the big bulk of it is gone. All right, so now I have a Q-tip and I'm just going to run it through this little chimney slash black piece or whatever it's called, just to really make sure that there's no coffee bean oil stuck in there. Because even if you have all of the really fine grinds out of there, that coffee residue or oil can, um, be one of the factors that you know coffee grinds will cling on to and get stuck to and you just really want to make sure you get that out of there not really too sure how that uh, before and after shot is going to look but that is looking really nice to me and compared to how it was before it's almost like a night and day difference and now I am going to clean this bad boy up. So, firstly, make sure all the little coffee grinds are out so the new ones that uh, fall down have a nice clean surface to dirty up. But, as you can see in here, there is some coffee going on along the burrs or the grind that uh, is happening in there. So I'm going to take this little thingamajig kind of just get in there make sure that I get everything off so this <clears throat> I'm essentially doing the same thing that I did with the burr just making sure I clean everything I can and get all the coffee out of there so as you can see, I had cleaned that little surface off just so you guys could really get a picture of how much coffee is stuck in there. Coffee can really 
get everywhere and every little bit of cleaning that you do is just going to make an incremental difference in your grind and eventually in the coffee that you drink. So just to kind of show you guys like how much coffee was in there, all of this was spread across all of the components and this can really alter the flavor and just the overall grind consistency of your coffee. So make sure you do this as often as you can so you guys are getting the best results. Now that our workspace is all nice, clean, and tidy, and the wife isn't mad anymore, we are going to reassemble this thing. So everything is pretty much the exact opposite of taking it apart, um, but I'll walk you guys through that just in case you guys had any issues with that. So I'm going to get the little black thingamajig and here is the part where if you have a shim and you'd like to install it, uh, make sure that you um, put it in here. So this shim, as you can see, has like two little keyed slots there. So those two keyed little slots are going to go onto that little thingamajig right there. So if I get this, just slide it right there easy day. Now you will put it back together just as you took it apart. So if you did not have a shim there, now is the time to emplace it and it will make every single grinding step that you do a little bit more finer and will ultimately help you dial in your grind. Now we are going to get the burr and this is a uh, pretty simple as you can see those two little holes there, and those will go on those two posts. So when you drop this on here, and you can feel it's locked in, it's not going to spin anymore, you're going to hold it with your finger right here, so it won't fall when you go upside down like that, and start screwing in that screw right there into the burr. So remember, hold your burr nice and tight, Get your Allen key, put it in, and let it rip. Make sure when you're doing this, when you give it that last little turn, that you're not over tightening it because you do not want to have the screw or the burr stripped. Just that nice little post sticking out right there, and you are good to go. Next is going to be shoving this thing into this little silver thingamajig. And there is no rhyme or reason to this. Just make sure everything is lined up. Get your little meaty paws on it and push it in. So it'll have a nice little snapping motion like that. As you can see, it's nice and emplaced in here. And it's free to spin and do awesome coffee things. Now that we have all of this put together, we're gonna go back to the grinder itself. Now, if you guys remember the little blue mark on this thingamajig and the grinder itself, here is where we are going to find it on here and on here, line it up, just give it a nice little push in there and then rotate it back in. You will feel the clicks getting where it needs to be and you will be good to go. So let me line this up. All right, right there, you saw that? It just clicks up and then turn it back. Not that way, <laughs> turn, there you go. So as you can see, it will catch whatever it is in there that allows the different coarseness to work and boom. So if you were curious about what the shim does, let me just explain it to you. Uh, using this scale here, using the numbers, if you use this machine without the shim, let's say a 10. Let's say the perfect little measurement unit that you're using is 10, but you want to kind of dabble around with you know, something even more finer, something past the one range. What the shim does is 
kind of displaces the burr to where that 10 becomes something like a 20 or a 25. Not sure what the exact ratio is, but it kind of moves it to the right. That way you're not limited to one because now one is actually the 10 and you have even more space to work with past that. So if you are really into espresso, really into finding that fine tuned little ratio for whatever grinder it is that you have, that is an awesome tool to use to really make this machine, make it sing. And I personally can still do pour overs with the like 27 range with the shim still in it and I am pretty happy with the coffee I get. Last but not least, you are going to get your hopper. Mine is still drying out just a smidge, but just, you know, to end the video off right. And honestly, this is a pretty important step because if you do not seat this properly and get it to lock on just like that, there is a safety interlock that will not allow you to grind. So if for whatever reason your machine's not starting up, uh, that is a huge thing to check. Make sure your hopper is where it needs to be. Well, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to as many of you as I can. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and a sub. It really does help support the channel. Other than that, I appreciate you guys stopping by and I'll see you next time. Later.